On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, Layers in ProPresenter 6. Hi and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you use software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your question, so just do that below the video. If you'd prefer, though, you can always go to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact. There you'll find all my contact information, or a lot of people just leave their questions there, so that's cool, too. So... I've heard a lot of questions about layers in ProPresenter, so I thought that we'd take a look at what they are and the order that they're located in, and uh, just so that you can be familiar. So let's head over to my computer. Okay, so here we are in ProPresenter 6, and as you see, I have a uh, song up. And if I click on that, you'll notice that we have the lyrics. So right now off the bat this is probably the way you're going to use it most often i have a background video which you can tell because of the little icon that looks like a piece of motion picture film and then a picture above it and then we have the lyrics so that's two layers we've got the background video layer and then we have the foreground layer so next i want to just um, take a look at the layers both above and below these main two layers. So above this layer, the next layer is props. So we can add a prop just to show you uh, that these layers are above that. So let's go to view, props, or you might have an icon up here. And let me add this prop right here okay so one thing you need to know about props is they are persistent so even when I change to different things the prop remains so if for some reason you have something that's showing up that you don't know what it's doing check the props layer which a lot of times you can get rid of just by clicking the clear props up here or going to actions and then clear props because that is located on the next layer above the lyrics on uh, the lyrics slide layer above that we have another layer that is the mask layer so again if we go to view and mask or you might have a button up here in the slideshow here. We also have a mask that I can add in. So again, masks are also persistent. And if um, I were to add a prop, so if I go to view props again, or control P, um, I've actually got a camera view here in a prop. Now that's going to be unusual. First off, you'll notice that the mask is above the prop of the camera view. So in order to see all of the prop underneath it, in this case the camera, I would have to clear out the mask, which I can do by either clicking the mask clear button here or clicking clear mask here under actions. Now I've got the prop and you'll notice that the prop covers up for some of the lyrics because it's on top of the lyric slide layer so I can clear that out. Now on top of that there is a, a higher layer that we need to get to view via preferences. So if we go there and then go to um,
Let me see where this is. I seem to have recall uh, this place where that is. Um, wait, it's under display. Corner pinning. So if I click on corner pinning, I actually have the ability to change where the corners are on the output display. Um, and I can do that by changing these XY coordinates here. So that's actually over top everything else. I'm going to click OK and remove the corner pinning because it really doesn't matter in here. One thing you should know is if you are using um, the SDI module, corner pinning doesn't affect that. Also, if you're using the SDI module, the edge blending doesn't affect that. So that's a little aside to help you. So we've got the corner pinning, then we've got the masks, then we've got the props, then we've got the slide layer. The slide layer itself can be made up of several layers. So let's uh, right click, click on edit slide here. And right now, all I've got is text. But over here, you can see that I, ha I can put several things in in a different order. So I can choose, let's say, I want to put a still image here. So this allows me to choose a still image. We'll give this just a second. Yeah, that's a picture I used on a previous show. So let's use that. So now you'll notice over here I have an image element and a text element. The text element is located underneath the image element so we can't see it. But what I can do is I can rearrange those by clicking and dragging and then that would show up. Now this isn't persistent. This is only on its, this one slide. So, when I click on this slide, it's not there. When I click on this slide, it is. And I go back, and it's gone. So I can have several layers on the slides layer, but they only last as long as I'm on this one slide layer. Now, concurrent with the slide layer is the foreground video layer. So this is a foreground video and I'm going to uh, click on this and what we'll expect is it's going to replace all this stuff. So I'm going to click on that and we'll see that this video of me does in, in fact replace it. Now by the way as an aside you'll notice that this ProPresenter logo is here that's just because I'm using the trial version here at home. I'm not using the church's license. So the foreground video is here um, and that replaces everything in the slides layer. So when I go back here, you'll know that that replaces that. So that's the difference between foreground and background videos. Foreground videos are on the slides layer background videos are on the background video layer underneath the slides layer. Now there is another layer so what we can do is we can actually go um, so let me put this back up and let's put text here and now let's turn on the camera. Now you're not going to use this very often, but on occasion you will. So let's go to yep, the live video layer right here. So when we click that, I expect that you're not going to see anything. And you don't see anything. 
and that's because we've got this here. So, but if I uh, clear the background, there you see me. Hi, me. And you'll notice that this is still over that video. Now notice that there's some latency. So, and this is on the built-in uh, camera in my MacBook Pro, so it's about as fast as it can be. But watch, you'll hear the clap, and then you will see the clap. So, three, two, one. Did you see that? You heard clap, and then you saw clap. So, this would be a bit of a problem. Uh, let's go ahead and let's clear that. So, from bottom to top, actually I'm going to leave that in. So, from bottom to top, we have the camera, then we have the background, then we have the slides layer, or the uh, foreground video layer, then we have the props layer, props layer, and then we have the mask layer, And then on top of that is the edge blending slash corner pinning layer. So that's all the different layers and based on where stuff is, you would uh, decide what to clear out to get rid of stuff that you don't want on your slide. In this case, um, if I didn't want the mask, I would first clear out the mask. So view actually actions, clear mask, then, then I need to clear out the props, which I could go to actions, clear props, or I could go here. I happen to have the clear props button there. Then I can clear the slides layer, which should be both the lyrics and this image. So I'm gonna clear that. Now I have the background video layer. I'm gonna clear the background and now I have me at the very bottom layer that is the, um, the live video layer and I'm going to go to actions and clear all to take care of that although I think I can just yep click on live video so Either way would do it, or I can clear them all with the clear all button. And I can always right click and add a clear media cue. Add clear action cue, and then clear any one of those five layers when you get to a certain slide. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that you're now more familiar with what the layers are in ProPresenter, what their order is, and if something seems to be stuck, where the first place you would look. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, pick up some church tech gifts and a free subscription to my email newsletter. Till next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with Trinity Digital Media.com.